Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. And today, we've got a chappy challenge. We're fishing at Stonebridge Lakes in North Yorkshire with our brand ambassador and good friend, Paul Kazira. And what Chappie said is, I'm gonna fish with, exclusively with the pole. Yep. And you're gonna fish rod and line. Yep. And we're gonna contrast the tactics and see how we fare um, on this wonderful fishery. No weight target at all, so should we have some on this one, do you think? Well, you do like to, <laughs> to have your <laughs> little know, I'm ready, bit, I'm ready you? for you, I've got my Go pound. on then. So we'll have a pound on it, yeah. and I have to say, I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm worried, <laughs> but I was a bit delayed in the traffic, and you were already set up on that peg over there. And I'm looking at it now, and it looks like a very nice peg with a big tree. <laughs> and I seem to be in a little bit of a barren area. You wouldn't be stitching me up, would you? Absolutely not. Absolutely okay. not, mate. I know I got here earlier, but I've not fished. OK, I But to make you. things fair, you know, I've pre-baited your swim for you. <laughs> well, anyway, I do trust you, so I'm not going to check your nets. Yeah. Let's get started, all right? Right. Great stuff. Good luck, Paul. And you, mate. <laughs> not too much of it. <laughs> Obviously, um, I'm restricted to fishing the pole today. So what I've decided to do is um, I've fed three different lines. I'm loose feeding casters out about between 14 and a half and 16 meters. Um, six mil pellets by hand at around about six meters. And then I'm also feeding down by this bush down the margin. And um, I know from fishing here before and also from how Paul's explained it, but uh, the target species really for me, I think today, is going to be chub and eyed uh, on the caster, fishing shallow, and then hopefully some carp um, on that pellet line and also down in the margins. And um, normal tactics here are to loose feed casters regularly and often, um, perhaps start on something else like a feeder or a different line just to get the fish confidence in feeding. Obviously I can't do that today, so I've just gone as long as I can. I'm trying all different depths, uh, but the most important thing is I'm constantly feeding casters. And so far I've had a, a few indications, a couple of small roach, um, but not the target chub or ride yet. But it's kind of what I expected really. It's gonna take some time to attract those chub and eyed to where I'm fishing and uh, start to trick them and get them feeding up in the water. That's just a, another little roach I just bumped there. So uh, I'm just sort of being patient and quite anxiously watching Paul on the next peg. He's had a few, I think he's had a few bites on his shallow waggler, so hopefully we'll start catching some decent fish soon. Chappy challenge today. I've got James fishing the pole and uh, I'm fishing rod and line. And right on cue. 
we'll get back to my bit of intro in a minute. I'm fishing uh, the brand new 12 foot match number two. And I was just about to do my bit of an intro of saying, I've set off fishing a pellet feeder while feeding my uh, chub line. And on the chub line, we've, we're trying to catch them shallow using caster. And I've been feeding that now for three quarters of an hour. And I've just thrown in first cast. And I've got a chub on, which wants to do me under my keep net. Those of you who do catch chub will realise it's the favourite ploy. But this rod is doing its job at the moment. <laughs> Don't know whether Chappie can catch that bend in that rod, but it's lovely. That's my first fish on it. And it looks like it's a chub. And it looks like a very good chub as well, looking at that. And he should be mine in a minute. And there we go. Well, I saw you catch a, cho uh, a roach, James, so you put the pressure on. I've had a cast. Yep. Yeah. Hook's come out. Ooh. And I've got one of our target species. Lovely chub. Probably three and a half pound. What do you think of that? Anyway, where was that on our intro? <laughs> I'll pop him in the net and we'll start that one again. As I was saying, I set off today, or this morning, on a pellet feeder, throwing across to the island while I've fed the chub line and uh, with casters and that's applicable to rivers as well. I tend to fish for chub by feeding the first 10 or 15 minutes, give those fish confidence and uh, before you actually throw a line to them and it works really well for me and it seems to have done the trick here as well because first cast in on that shallow waggler I've had a chub. So uh, I've seen a fish or two swirling about after spending half an hour, 40 minutes, just loose feeding casters. So it's definitely worked. My tactics today are just fishing shallow. I've got two rods set up. I'm just fishing shallow, two different depths on the waggler. And should it go quiet, I've got my pellet method across to the island using the new number two nine foot feeder rod which uh, is absolutely brilliant rod so I've already had one on it so I've christened both new rods very early on and uh, I must say I do like this uh, 12 foot number two for this job I'm sure it'll work on rivers just as well in them tight swims. Well, James is breaking out in a sweat because I've got another fish. 
But I haven't to get too cocky. Chappie's told me this because it's all going to go wrong if I don't watch myself. Because looking at James, he's going short for the carp now. So things might change. So I need to get a few of these in the net before he starts catching those carp. And it's another beautiful chub. Smaller one this time, so a bit easier to subdue. Let's have a look at him. Another lovely Stonebridge chub. Fair play to Paul, he's had a lovely chub and I've just had a one or two more small roach and I'm getting the odd bite. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to actually rest this long line at 16 metres. Obviously I'm going to continue to feed it and I'm going to try my pellet line and margin line. Probably a bit early really to expect a fish on it, but I just want to rest the area that I'm feeding out there and um, try and get those chub and eyed feeding. I think um, it's pretty obvious, but the chub and I'd hug that island over, over out in the middle of the lake, and that's got to be probably 20 metres. So I'm fishing as far as I can towards that island, but I think I've got to try and drag the fish closer within range of the pole. And who knows, maybe the, the pole itself is just spooking the fish. So I'll just have another minute on it and then I'll rest it, keep feeding it, and give it another go later. Big smile on my face, you can see that. I'm into a carp. Don't you just love this? Don't know how big it is yet, I don't think it's a monster. Certainly pulling hard. Trying to work out whether James is grimacing or smiling, I can't work it out. <laughs> well, I didn't do it justice, I thought it was a little one, but it's, it's a bit bigger than I thought. Oh, look at that. And he's in the net. Fantastic. There you go. Carp to the pellet feeder. Makes a change for me, but I still love it. I've done what I said. I've come in from a 16 metre line and I'm just feeding casters and honestly, you wouldn't believe it. I can see two or three chub now cruising around under the surface. So. Whether it was the pole that was just spooking him a bit, I don't know, but I'm going to keep feeding, um, just like I would on a river, to try and get the fish confident feeding up in the water and I'll have another go. I think what I might do as well is try a bit longer line on my rig to keep the pole away from the float. So It's just fascinating. Typical chub. They can be sneaky little buggers at times. Well, that seemed to do the trick. <laughs> Um, I just kept feeding for about 10 minutes. I could see the chub feeding under the surface and what I decided to do was rather than go to full 16 metres, I just went out to 14 and a half and uh, I increased the length of my line on the rig because I'm sure they were spooking from the, from the shadow of the pole. And uh, I'm not sure what this is, but I'm guessing it might be a good chub. I'm just going to take my time because uh, 
I don't want to lose it. It's taken some catching this fish. They really do fight on here, these chub. And as always, they'll always try and uh, snag you up if they can. Once you get the head up, normally you're all right. And we got him. Well, that's a fish anyway, so... Well done, Jim. I'm not going to say the pressure's off, but it's a start. And uh, what a lovely chub. Got to be... What do you reckon, chappy? Two pound? Two pound. Okay, so I think I'm going to repeat the process. I'm just going to keep feeding for a while before I go out. And I'll see if I can sneak another one. I mentioned before that chub are so wary. And um, just because these chub are in a lake, it doesn't mean they're any more stupid than a chub in a river. And uh, I think by constantly feeding like this, you're obviously going to attract the chub to where you're feeding perhaps away from where they're living, under the cover of the island. And um, by constantly feeding small amounts, they're gonna be feeding really confidently and perhaps not make, taking so much notice of the, of the difference with your hook bait. And one thing for sure, they'll also be competing with each other. So uh, I suppose my river sort of skills have come into play really, just uh, trying to trick them, but I'm also still feeding my six metre line with uh, six mil pellets and down by this bush in the margin I'm feeding hemp and meat and I've been feeding not heavily but sort of irregularly with good handfuls of hemp and meat so hopefully maybe towards the end of the session I might sneak a couple of bonus fish from by that bush as well but the good news is I can see more chub out there so I'm just going to be patient, keep feeding, and see if I can go and sneak another one. Well, that's just the case when you float fishing on most tactics. It pays to constantly adjust the depth that you're fishing and the shotting pattern to change your presentation. And so far today on this shallow rig, I've fished from three foot up to just six inches depth. And I just caught that chub about a foot deep. Um, and what I've actually done is I've moved all the stots or shot on the line to just underneath the float. So I've just got a very natural fall of bait. And another thing I've done is I just thought I'd try a good river trick which is to put a, a maggot on whilst feeding castor. Well, that's another fish. I just had a period of five minutes where uh, I could see the um, chub feeding, but I couldn't catch them. And I just um, went just a fraction deeper and actually changed over to a double red maggot hook bait and um, I think I've got another chub. The pole I'm using is our CP2000. It's a wonderfully versatile pole. Um, as you've seen, I've been fishing it up to 16 metres, no bother today. And um, it's really nice to try it out on some bigger fish like these chub and hopefully carp on a commercial. I've actually got the, this has got a 12 to 14 elastic in. It's quite a soft elastic. And as you can see, I'm using this puller kit. And um, I'm actually using the match top two at the moment but we also do a power top as well which I've set up with a heavier 14 elastic for those carp in the margins but, uh, 
I'm just taking my time because I know what these chub can do. They can suddenly change direction and snag you up. There we go, there's another one. So that's two chub. And I think that one's a bit bigger. I think Chappie might even give me three pound for that one. And I just nicked him in the top of the mouth. So I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to feed for five minutes before I go out and see if I can get them competing in the feed again. And I'm just going to try my short line on the pellet. Yeah, I've gone through quite a lull since the, in the fishing since the sun came out. And uh, carried on feeding the casters. Not seeing any signs of chub really. I've had a go on the pellet feeder and same, not a sign, it's just like they've switched off. Out of the blue, I've hooked one. Now I'm not sure whether it's foul hooked or not, because I've just catapulted some casters in and drew back into the swim, so might be that it's foul hooked, but oh, it don't look like it. Let's have a look. Oh no, it's hooked properly, just a good chub. And I've just changed to a, to a banded caster, whether that's made any difference or not, I don't know. But I haven't had a bite for ages, and it's my first cast with a banded caster. Oh yeah, it's up properly. And this rod's certainly doing its job. Love it, love it, love it, love it. There it comes. You probably still see the caster in its mouth there, look. What a nice fish. Let's have a look at him. What a lovely chub. Fall onto a banded caster. If I get this right, you might just be able to see that. Perfect illustration of how the banded caster works. Well, I'm in again. And it, uh, it's definitely got a bit harder, but I'm still fishing that banded caster. And believe it or not, all you true Yorkshiremen are going to love this one. This is on the same caster as I caught that last chub with. <laughs> so there's a money saving tip for you. And it's uh, yeah, another chub falling to the waggler shallow on the caster. And here he comes. Let's have a look at him. A southerner's fish, about two pound. <laughs> again it's getting boring this how's it going your end james are, are, you, are you living the dream though you must be watching me fish <laughs>
wake up. Well, that rod pulled him out of there nicely. Banded caster again. And that's chub number three to the banded caster and it's the same caster. <laughs> Always fighting in the net. Lovely chub. Two and a half pound chappy. Let's have him in the net. You got that caster. Save that for chub number four. Right, what's this we've got? Well, as well as the chub that we're catching here. There's something just a little bit special about Stonebridge Lakes, and you're just going to witness one now. Well, we've had that on the scales. Absolutely stunning hide is that, and it weighed five pound two ounces. Brilliant. What a venue, Stonebridge, for these sort of fish. Well, Paul's definitely taken the lead now. He's had. I think he's had four chub, a big hide and a carp, and I'm still on two chub, so I thought, why not have a little break and uh, just watch what he's doing? And um, <laughs> typical Paul, and thanks to Pauline, look at that for a packed lunch. I think I'm gonna <laughs> spend a bit of time enjoying that. Thanks, Pauline. Right, today we've had a few carp on the pellet feeder. You're pretty much all familiar with how that works, so I won't go into great details about that. Um, I've had a few carp, they've been my bonus carp really. But uh, the one thing I will say is the new CR10 9 foot feeder too, it's been an absolute dream to use. I've never felt in, in trouble with the carp at all. It's played them beautifully. Right, perhaps uh, what will be of greater interest to you is my waggler setup. It's pretty unique really, for, and, it, and it's one I use a lot for fishing up in the water. We're setting off with a waggler, which is just a short, dumpy waggler, but one thing I don't do is put them on a, uh, a float adapter. I like my what, my wagglers when I'm fishing shallow like this with these short wagglers to be just fished uh, direct to the line and sandwiched between uh, a few small number eight shot. And as you can see, I'll leave the gap there and that's just enabling the float to fold over on strike and uh, it gives me a better chance of hitting the fish. So I'll fish this today just with a uh, two pound Maxima line to my CR10 3000 match reel. And uh, I'm using today the new CR10 12 foot match tool. It's the first time I've used it and uh, it's an absolute brilliant rod. I've really enjoyed playing the fish on this. It's great on the strike, picks up line quick, and it certainly, certainly helps me with the playing action of those fish. It certainly helps land them easily. Another little thing of interest, which I just failed not to fail to mention, is the most successful bait for me today has been the caster banded, and uh, you might pick up on the uh, on the actual video itself. I've caught four fish on that on a single caster because the fish don't crush the caster and uh, one of the benefits I see behind it and it's helped me get more bites I believe if I just put the rod down I can show you 
when the caster sits in the water, it sits horizontally. Now if you uh, go fishing and you get a few casters and throw them in the water, you'll see that the casters sink horizontally in the water. So you get no better presentation, I don't think, than fishing that uh, caster on a band. And that's been my most successful rig. Fished at different depths. I've got a couple of other rigs set up, but uh, I didn't really have the opportunity to use them today because we've got a bit of a crosswind and it causes us problems. Casters, my favorite bait, especially for chub, and I'll use casters pretty much any venue. I've been to venues where they've said caster doesn't work, but I make it work, it's really good. And to set off with, we're feeding sort of that amount on a regular basis. And when I say regular basis, I'm talking every 20 seconds, really. So you go through quite a few. I've gone through probably five pints today and we've only fished four hours, four and a half hours, something like that. And it is really important if you want to catch chub and roach and pretty much any other fish higher in the water, and that's where they come when you lose feed anyway, feed plenty and very regularly. And uh, that's, that's been the key today. For my hook baits, today I've been using caster that I put on, uh, on my side tray or just in a spare container like this to pretty much let dry out and darken off. They become more buoyant and uh, they counteract the weight of the hook superbly and, and the fish don't suspect them uh, as much as they do a normal caster. So on a hard day, that is a great tip and that'll catch you more fish. Right, let's have a look at the Kirtan rig that I'm using for that shallow rig. So the actual top kits are match top three for the CP2000. I've taken the tip out. That's a four mil internal bush. And the elastic I've used is the um, Matrix Silk, and that's 10 to 12. So it's a nice soft elastic for fishing shallow for the chub and the eyed. My main line is uh, 016 millimeter. And the advantage of that is obviously I can fish straight through if I start hooking some bigger fish like carp. But actually today, given the hard conditions with how bright it's been, I've actually scaled down to a 0.125 hook length. And that seems to have made a difference. I've had quite a nice long hook length around about a foot. Um, I've adjusted that depending on the depth. Um, the float I've used is this one gram, which I think is four by 10. It's a carbon stem float, it's got a nice thickish bristle. Obviously I'm only fishing castor or maggot as hook baits, so I don't want too thick a tip on the float. And one thing to say, you know, the bites so far have been quite fast and difficult, so I think I need to fish with a bit of finesse like that float. Then the shotting pattern is really simple. I've actually got three number 10 stots down the line. And by far the best rig so far has been pushing the stots together and then literally just fishing a foot or 10 inches deep, depending on the length of that hook length. Um, I have caught a few fish a bit deeper and I've tried right up to sort of three foot depth with a little mini bulk. Best hook today, I've tried a few. And again, just emphasising a bit of finesse, is this Kamazan B911F1 in a size 18. I tried a 20 and also tried a 16, but the 18 seemed to be the best. So, I mentioned early on in the video that uh, I was having to actually fish a long line between my float and the pole tip, because clearly the chub was spooked away from the pole. I've just been having to keep feeding, resting it, go on it, nick a fish or two. And when the conditions went flat, it went really hard. And a good tip that I was given was, when you're fishing with a long line and you're fishing shallow like that, it's good to incorporate a drop shot above the float, a back shot rather. And you can adjust that. But what it tends to do, is, especially when you've got a skim like this, it just means that you can swing the rig into position and you can hold the tip and that 
back shot just helps keep the rig steady. You get a bite and you seem to connect with the fish better. It has been uh, amazing today really to work out the best rigs and presentation to trick the chub. I found um, the best way of hooking the maggot today is actually to side hook it, which is a great tip for when you're fishing maggots or casters up in the water. So you can see that that maggot's still wriggling well, the nice fine hook hasn't burst it, and uh, I think it's just got to help. It's, if you notice when you throw maggots or casters into the water, they tend to sink in that way rather than the way we perhaps sometimes hook it, and chub can be so sneaky, so that can help. Finally, the other best bait I've had, I've had uh, three or four chub on a actual good old fashioned double red and I've fished that, I've hooked that through the tail. Um, interestingly, I've only had one fish on a caster, so it's crazy really when you're feeding caster, but it's often the way on the river as well. Perhaps the maggot just stands out and it's a target for the chub, so even if you're feeding casters, always give the maggot a go. Well, that port pie Pauline definitely did the trick, thank you. <laughs> I rested my swim again, and uh, I'd been feeding maggots, but just switched over to caster. And um, that's another chub in the net. Still, I've got a lot to do, and I think I'm gonna need snookers to beat him now. But uh, I'm still feeding that carp line, so you never know. The carp might turn up yet. That's a beautiful chub, and I just think, I'll, what a fantastic venue this is. I just love catching chub. <laughs> Thanks for that, Paul. My pleasure. I was just regretting going a bit far. Tried 012. Just Did you? that was a carp. Was yeah. <laughs> that was very heartfelt. That wasn't it. Oh, One thing that's interesting that's happened in the last 20 minutes is. The shade from the far banks come over to where I'm fishing. It's a little bit to the right, so I've started to feed a bit to the right. And it looks like that's really helping me. So obviously we're fishing in the middle of the day now and um, it was proving really tricky to catch anything at all. I actually had a decent carp on, which unfortunately, much to Paul's amusement, I pulled out of. I'd, I'd actually gone a bit fine. I'd gone down to a 18 hook to 012 for the chub and um, the cart was playing up a bit anyway. I think this could be a, a decent sized chub. Let's see if we can get it up off the bottom. Up he comes. Yep, nice chub. Brilliant. And I just looked round to think I was doing well and pulls into a fish on the feeder, I think, so. Never mind, I'll just hold that one up for you. That's probably my biggest chub so far. Absolutely beautiful fish. And they fight like mad.
Well done, James. How big was that chub? Well, you've you've caught three. You've caught three on the trot, so thought it was my turn. Well, I've gone back on the uh, pellet feeder because the chub have disappeared from me, and by a bit of a coincidence, James has started catching. So I know where they've gone. And I've just thrown into the shadows of the trees over the far side and uh, tip's gone straight round and I've got myself another little bonus the cap to the feeder and I'm really loving this new rod of yours James for this job. It's absolutely perfect for it. And as James was saying earlier, these fish just don't give up in here. It's a great place to come pleasure fishing because they give you such a fight. Every fish in the place. Is mine. Oh. And another lovely Stonebridge carp to the pellet feeder. I've just had a, another, well, I think two quick chub. Um, hook bait's definitely best, is a uh, single red maggot. And I'm actually side hooking it rather than hooking it in the normal way. Um, I keep trying the caster, but I can't catch on it, so just shows you, but I think that's my seventh chub now. And uh, I'm obviously just continuing to keep feed casters. And uh, I'm catching right up in the water. I'm probably fishing a little, even a little bit shallower now. And it's definitely helped me the fact that this shaded areas come in to my swim. So you never know, I've got a long way to go yet, but uh, might get pulled twitching a little bit now. I've decided to go deeper, just to see if they drop down a bit. And uh, that little ploy seems to have worked. Because lo and behold, just as James had caught me up, I've got one. And as you can see, float to chub, a lot deeper now. We've got the RAF doing manoeuvres as well, so we're getting a bit of sound from the outside. But it's still a great day. Well, it's gone a bit hard for me again on the long pole and uh, caster. I've not had a fish for probably 25 minutes now. So there's only half an hour of the of pool's match left. So I'm going to have a go down the inside again. I've been feeding all day and I've not seen any signs of any carp. I keep trying it, but you never know. Just uh, Last knockings, I might just get a couple of nice carp. So I'll obviously keep feeding the casters long and uh, just rest that line and try for a carp. Well, it's getting uh, near to the end of our session now, our little knock up. Both James and I have really struggled this last hour, hour and a half. And uh, I've just decided to sit it out on the feeder, hoping I can just get that bonus before we finish just to keep in front of James, because I do believe I'm in front of him. And uh, guess what? Tip's gone round, out of the blue, not a warning or anything, like it does on your method or your pellet feeder, and I've got one. Whether it's enough to see me home and win me my pound, we'll have to wait and see. 
Oh, James has just got one. Nice three ounce of that, James. Good lad. Oh. Man's decided he wants to go under the tree. Oh, I could lose this one. He's got stuck now. Oh no, he's out. It's my lucky day today. He got under the tree, got stuck, but he's come out. Lovely fish. It's been a testing day, really, for us both. And it's uh, been down to whether you take the gamble. A bit of an advantage for me, because I'm used to how these fish react, and I know that the chub die off. And I've just picked the right time to go on the feeder. And it's paid dividends. But I'm sure James is going to get me back at another venue somewhere. This could be our best fish of the day, this one. Clutch doing its work on this rail. I like to play my fish off the clutch. If you play them on backwind, the carp I find, you can lose control of them pretty quickly. Close to being mine now. Ooh. These fish here at Stonebridge, they just don't know when to give up. It's a fantastic place to fish. I haven't really had a good sight of it yet. As soon as I get it near the surface, it's off again. I think Richard must feed them on steroids, these, because they just don't give up. Here we go. You know that time of day when the sun's shining right in your face, you can't see where that fish is? It's that time of day. Come on. doing its job anyway I'll be using this again that's for sure come on <laughs> got him Hoo -hoo. get in <laughs> Now that is a nice fish. What a beauty. Best fish of the day. And I'm well chuffed. Right then, I think that's it. Chap is called time. So, all out Paul. And uh, <laughs> we'll have a look and see what we've caught. What are you gonna give me then, Paul? Well, James, if you stop pulling it down, <laughs> I'll give you If they stay still, that's the trouble with these fishy deers. 26 pound dead, would you, would you settle for that? Fair enough, mate, fair enough. Uh, right, James, what am I, two ounces behind you? I don't think it's gonna matter. How many carp you, sure? you got there, four? I've got 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, four bonus fish. Four them, mate. Cheers, pal. They'll be a better. It's 19 pound dead. Let's just show the camera. Well, Paul, I've had um, nine chub for 26 pound. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I just love fishing in this venue, Stonebridge Lakes. Great, Catching yeah. chub like this is just awesome. You've slightly eclipsed me with those carp. <laughs> and well, you've had, what have you weighed, 35? 35, 14. Well done, mate. Yeah. You deserve that. You fish really well. And Thank I think, you. Uh, you know, it was interesting to see the two different tactics. It was, yeah. You know, between the pole, the waggler and the feeder, so. You, you were just unfortunate. The carp didn't want to play a ball It's a shame. We've, we've seen the mm. carp on the other side of the lake and they've mm. obviously hugged the island, but today I've absolutely loved it, so I'm not mm. complaining. Well done, mate. Cheers, Paul. Thanks for watching. Hang on a minute, James. Whoa, 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 whoa. Have you forgotten something, mate? What are you, what are you saying, Paul? Uh, you know, back to the this morning, didn't we have something on this one? <laughs> oh, you found. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've kept that in a special place for you. Right uh, deep down man, in yeah. my pocket. Don't be embarrassed. Almost got away with it. You did, didn't you? You're going to enjoy this, mate. I am. I am, yeah. There you go. Thank you very much. Well done. Cheers. Look forward to the next one. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!